bell rings. We welcome you to worship on this Father's Day Sunday. I want to especially welcome all the fathers who are here today and their children. And call your attention to the announcements. First announcement, I want to introduce my brother Bruce. Bruce Wade. He's up at the front. My older brother by 17 months. He's here because the University of Virginia is in the College World Series. And immediately after worship, we're taking off. We're headed to Omaha to watch Virginia play in the unfortunately loser's bracket game. But anyway, it's a delight to have my brother Bruce and he will play a part in the children's message. Completely out of character, he will be an angel of God. <laughs> I call your attention to the other announcements. Prayer meeting via Zoom. Bible study in Ringgold County in the little town of Malloy on Wednesday and then Thursday down at Sharpsburg as we study in Genesis and John. Also, it is the time to return your baby bottle for the baby bottle boomerang to be taken home and brought back and all the money from the Life Care Clinic. And don't worry, if you forgot, next Sunday will be good too. But I see back there, it looks like we have 10 or 12 return. Read that. So, baby bottle boomerang. <laughs> Money that goes in here to support the Life Care Clinic, which deals with pregnant mothers and fathers, and then young couples after they give birth. Any other announcements? Then let us worship God. I'm going to teach you a song from Psalm 134. Praise. Praise the Lord. To teach it to you, then we'll sing it through twice. It goes like this. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord.
As God's people together, let us confess our sins. God, our Heavenly Father, who love us more than any earthly father or mother, even though we disobey you over and over again, we confess we are sinners, standing in need of your mercy, grace, and forgiveness. We humbly pray, forgive our sins through Jesus Christ, the Savior of sinners. In his name we pray. Thank you, 
Sarah, and in just a minute you can bring them their gifts, but not yet, because we have a special treat for Father's Day. One, we're going to ask you all, in just a minute, to pass out treats to all the fathers in the congregation. Okay? Could you help me? But first, Kate and Reese, would you like to play for us today on the piano? Special music.
milk. For all the men in church today, they get one free musketeers, and especially for our story today, they get one Snickers. Because Sarah laughed, as did Abraham. And do you know what they named their baby? Isaac, which means laughter. So a Snickers to all the dads, along with the three musketeers, because they're our heroes. And you don't have to give me any, because I'm allergic to chocolate. So I got myself two paydays. <laughs> That's what I look forward to most as a master, my paydays. You may pass them out. To the youngest ones, we'll give treat bags. You also have two candy bars in yours. You can go to your seats. Those you can give back to Steve and Connie for reason. Hey. So each of you should get a three musketeers and the snickers. Three musketeers and the snickers.
Glad you're here today with your dad to bring it. Any others? Yes, thank you. One year since the wreck that almost took Vicki's life, but she has survived through it, and hey, I think a hand clap of thanks to the Lord for this one. And one thing I'll never forget, Vicki, is that when you got out of the hospital and you were still braced up and supposed to be home, you came back to church the very first Sunday and haven't missed since. Wow. Darlene. Well, I'm glad my grandson got home from Israel where he's been living, and uh, but he's, him and his mother, Rosalie, have uh, went on to Topeka, Kansas to visit Rosalie's sister today, so they didn't make it to church. So we lift up Darlene's family, especially for her grandson home from Israel. Martin Smith, they have Paige Kuhn. The uh, last report I had, they're both doing well. Martin Smith is with Judy Beckett. And he's been going through cancer and just had surgery. Had heart surgery. Today. Heart surgery, not, not cancer, heart. It's Paige who had cancer. He has, can he has cancer too. Okay. Marvin Smith and Paige Coon, same age as my oldest daughter, and went on many mission trips with us. We lift up Paige Coon as she recovers from an 11 hour cancer surgery. We don't see Steve Sawyer here. Steve Sawyer? Steve Sawyer's here. He's just sitting in a new place now. <laughs> His granddaughters play for him. Steve, if you don't sit in the same place every week, then. Um, Bobby. It marks the one year anniversary for Chase and Taylor. Chase and Taylor were married in this church and now expecting their first child. Joy. Willie. My daughter Debbie is with me today. She's not perking real good yet. But uh, she's here, and the 26th of this month, I am moving to Council Bluffs, Iowa. And I also want to tell you, I think yesterday was a special day, their anniversary, Keith and Jeannie. Keith and Jeannie Lindell celebrating an anniversary. Willie, his daughter is here with us, him for Father's Day, and Willie is moving to a Presbyterian assisted living home, or senior home, in Council Bluffs at the end of the month, and Willie, you will be missed, but we will track you down, I promise. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry land, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We have been praying for rain, Lord, and you provide it. Please continue to send rains at the right time. There are farmers might grow the crops to feed the world. We do pray for all those who are hungry, for those in situations of war, for the people of the Ukraine, for the people of Sudan. We give thanks this day for Jill Breach, an elder from Sharpsburg who is on a medical mission team. <coughs> she is serving the people of Guatemala, Lord. We lift her up today in prayer. We lift up Bruce Max and his visit and his Virginia Cavaliers. Keep all safe, Lord. We're going to ball games today and celebrating Father's Day in various ways. We lift up Savannah as she heals. And Frank Marks, who has been through an intensive surgery, and isn't doing great, Lord. We pray for Mike and Shirley and Red Oak, for Marilyn, for Tom Lynham and Jeff Wood. Be with them, Lord, through their treatments for cancer. Be also with Marvin Smith and Paige Kuhn. We lift up Cabri and her presence here today. We lift up Chase and Taylor and the child they are expecting. We lift up Darlene and her family, those who are here and those who are visiting with one another. 
And I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace in all circumstances. Hear these, the prayers of your people, even as we pray the prayer you taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remain seated for M505, Faith of Our Fathers. Facebook page. Click on the link. 
should give you what you need. Thank you. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I went off to college thinking I knew everything I needed to know about God and the Bible. After all, I've been raised in a Christian home with a Presbyterian pastor father and a mother who was an elder. I knew my Bible inside and out, and so it took all my willpower to keep from correcting my Old Testament professor when he stood up on the first day of class and said, we're going to start with the first book of the Old Testament, Exodus. I had learned that song, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and so on. And I knew that Genesis was actually the first book of the Bible. But just as I was about to raise my hand, I saw the professor's eyebrows go up. And he looked at us with twinkling eyes, daring us to disagree with them. When nobody did, he continued, If God had not rescued the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt, if they, he had not led them through the wilderness into the promised land and given them a land of their own, there never would have been a Bible. It was written by the Israelites after they had gathered. We looked at him skeptically, and then he said, okay, all of you know-it-alls, tell me what the first five books of the Bible are called. I raised my hand. The five books of Moses, I said. Right, he said. Where do you find Moses in Genesis? He's not, I said. He wasn't born till Exodus. I repeat, he said. The first book of the Bible is Exodus, because in Exodus we learn the true nature of God. Genesis, he said, is the prequel. It tells us all about God's dealings with Adam and Eve, with Noah and Abraham and Sarah and family, all the way through Joseph. But in Genesis, the people are trying to figure God out. It's in Exodus we learn the true nature of God. That was the very first lecture he gave, and I've never forgotten it. Because the longer I'm a pastor, the more I realize the truth in what he said. It's in the Exodus that we learn the true nature of the God we call Father. God got Moses' attention by speaking from a bush that was burning but not consumed. And the words that God spoke are words that should not be forgotten. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying because of the cruelty of their slave drivers. I know their suffering. And I am going to deliver them. Brothers and sisters, this is the true nature of God. God sees us in the midst of our suffering. God hears our cries. God knows what we're going through and acts to deliver us. Maybe 
the key phrase in all of that is in that first sentence when God says, I have seen the Israel of, the, I have seen the misery of my people. It's that possessive. We don't have a God who just exists up in the heavens. There was a group called the Deists. They were very popular around the founding of our nation, and this is what they believed, that there was a creator God who created the world and then withdrew, allowing human beings to do whatever they do, not interfering in the lives of those who are on earth, the deists. But as Christians, we believe in a God who intervenes in our lives, who is present to us, who calls us his children. We hear these words in 1 John in the New Testament. See what great love God the Father has showered on us that we should be called children of God. For that is what we are. We are God's children and God is our heavenly Father. That's a gift to us from God. I love the way Psalm 103 describes God, and that's why it was used not only for our assurance of pardon, but Christy read it for you again. Describing a God who is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, quick to remove our sins far from us, eager to show us compassion and mercy. Though I have to smile, because the psalmist compares God to an earthly father who has compassion on his children. I, I really think it should be the other way around. Earthly fathers who show compassion to their children should be compared to God because God's compassion and love far surpass anything that an earthly mother or father can do. Are you ready for the New Testament? Jesus' disciples ask him, teach us to pray, Lord. And this is how Jesus said we ought to begin our prayers. Our Father. Notice both those words. Our is a possessive. Father. Our Father, the one who created us, the one who loves us, the one who is there for us, the one who sees, who hears, who acts on our behalf. That's the one we pray to. Not some far off distant being who might or might not act. No, a God who has acted in our interest on our behalf over and over again. As set forth not only in the Bible, but in our individual lives. But if we dare to call God Father, if we dare to consider ourselves God's children, then we have two choices. Are we going to be obedient children or disobedient children? And it seems to me that if we want to be obedient children, then we better be trying to do what God does. When I first became a pastor, I always had words to speak. But my mentor, Pastor George Eichel, said, Tim, the first job of a pastor is not to speak, even though you love to talk. The first job of a pastor is to listen, to see, and then to act. Speak only when necessary, he said. As I started to argue, I thought about this passage, always a favorite of mine from Exodus. God spoke, but listen to what he said. I have seen, I have heard, I have felt, and so I will act. And so it is that we as Christians need to look around us and see what's going on. We need to hear the cries of those who are crying. We need to feel it 
in our hearts and then act. The baby bottled boomerang project is a wonderful one to be held between Mother's Day and Father's Day. For in our nation, there are many who are expecting to cry out for help. As we support the Life Care Clinic, we help those who are crying out in their time of need, we provide. And when I say we, all we give is a little bit to John and Rita and others volunteer their time. We give, we act. 30 years ago, 30 summers ago, I've been here now 29 years and three months. Our session voted to pay half of the camp costs for every kid who went to church camp from here. And I can safely say that in 30 years, there has never been a kid connected to our church in any way who has been denied church camp. Because with your gifts, you have made sure that they get to go. And there are also individuals who fill in the gaps so that kids go cost-free to a place where they can learn about God and learn about the God that loves them and cares for them. Even now, in our world, there's war in Ukraine. There's an internal civil war going on in Sudan. There are people on our own border crying out in misery. And you know who was there? The Church of Jesus Christ. In our denomination, we call it the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program, but I have learned that the Mennonites have such a program, as do the Methodists, as do the Catholics and the Lutherans and the Baptists, all of us working together to hear the cries of those in trouble, to see their misery, and to act as God acted in Exodus. Do we always do all we can? No. And that's why we need to sometimes ask God for forgiveness. In fact, every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, our final scripture for the day, we ought to be thinking to ourselves, am I doing what I pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Are you praising God as you need to praise God? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Are you really striving to bring about the kingdom of God to do God's will? Give us this day our daily bread. As you eat your fill of your daily bread, are you making sure that others can eat too? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Ooh, that's a big one. I don't know about you, but I'm much quicker to ask for forgiveness than to grant it. And I need God to move in me to make me more compassionate and forgiving. Even as my brother is staying with me and we have our little squabbles, I remember, ah, God's called me to forgive him. And he's forgiven me all his life since he's the older one. Lead us not into temptation. We live in a world where temptation is all over the place. Do we ask God's help and help him keep us from temptation? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our constant prayer needs to be that God would keep us from doing wrong and help us to do right. And then a final reminder, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, O oh God, our Heavenly Father. For yes, our world belongs to God, who created it, who put us in it, who expects us to live as Christ lived. And that brings us to our final reminder of the true nature of God, Jesus Christ, who came to us in human flesh, teaching and preaching and healing and feeding and promoting the kingdom of God until he was nailed to a cross, where he died for our sins and the sins of the world and was raised for our salvation. We find the true nature of God in Jesus Christ. But God has never changed. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. 
Father and Mother of us all, from this day forth and forevermore. That's the God we worship and serve. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your compassion, your love. Fill us with these things, too, that we might do your work, that we might do your will, that we might be your faithful, obedient children. And we pray in Jesus' name, who forgives us when we fall short. Amen. Our closing hymn is one of my favorites. This is my Father's world. Stand as we sing together. Son and Holy Spirit, and may His grace be upon you now and always. Amen.